Ahoy adventurers and welcome back to Abnormal Voyages. My name is David and today we find ourselves in the beautiful and fascinating city of St. Augustine, Florida. First on our list, the Museum of Pirates and Treasure. Let's check it out. Come tag along. So we begin our pirate voyage, and as you come in, you actually get a treasure map that if you fill out throughout the museum, you get yourself some treasure. You can't pass up on that. Adventure out on the high seas is a dream many have, and few went after that dream as hard as pirates. Though some write pirates off as mere crooks and criminals, the romanticized image of a swashbuckling adventurer lives on in our culture. Though the golden age of piracy began in 1650, pirates have been around in some form or another for as long as people have had boats and used them to transport goods. So as we go throughout the museum, we're gonna find this little pirate symbol right here. And that means we're on the right trail to a clue. So let's open this up. And it looks like our first item is a charting kit and a map of St. Augustine. We write that on here, and we're good to go. One down, 11 more. The St. Augustine Pirate and Treasure Museum has been here in St. Augustine since 2010 and boasts over 800 pieces of authentic pirate relics and history. All pirates love having a good drink, so we headed into the tavern as we hunted down more pieces of the treasure map. These were pieces of Sir Francis Drake's actual ship, and some very piratical artwork to help set the mood. As you can clearly see, pirates came in all shapes and sizes, but they all had one thing in common, a love for freedom. And here's two gentlemen now, discussing the details of a new expedition out on the seas. We'll leave them to it while we keep searching for our next clue. St. Augustine was certainly no stranger to pirate activity. In this display case, you were able to see pieces that had been excavated right here from this very city. And here was the next piece of our treasure map. Games of Chance. Makes sense that we would find this here in a tavern. There were some handmade dice that they played with plenty of times, I'm sure. And in the drawer next to that, we found a genuine set of old playing cards. Moving on, we saw an example of Pirate Code of Conduct as well as some artifacts that had been recovered. And there was a display that taught you how pirates used to tell time using bells and hourglasses. Any sailor worth his salt knows how to tie knots. This station taught you some of the basics to get you ready to cast off. The main deck of the ship had plenty to see. Very importantly, we had a compass that helped you figure out which direction you were going in. And of course, the helm. Here at the steering wheel, you could make your way through the water. I had to hoist up the Jolly Roger right before we took sail. And in a barrel, we found our next piece of the treasure map. A kit to help you sew up the sails Whenever cannonballs or anything like that flew through them, you had to get it fixed so you could keep going. 
Of course, one of the most fun parts of any voyage was the sights and sounds you experienced, and the smells. I won't give away the surprises, but when you're here, make sure you smell each of the cargo containers to see what exactly it is you're carrying. Our search continued into the captain's quarters. At one point, Blackbeard was actually a pretty well-respected and educated man. Some of these books here were ones that he actually read himself, as well as other artifacts from other just as revered captains. And displayed proudly was a genuine Jolly Roger flag, one of the last surviving ones in the entire world. The captain's desk was littered with different articles, different charts, the log of his adventures, lots to see. Of course, being captain was a very dangerous job. You always had to be looking out for mutiny, just in case someone wanted a bigger share of the treasure. So, it definitely made sense to sleep with a little protection. And here underneath the sleeping captain, we find our next clue. A printing block of the Jolly Roger. This would have been used to get that famous symbol on any proclamations or notes going out. One step closer to the treasure. Being a pirate in general was a very dangerous profession. If the king's men ever caught up to you, it was almost certain you would be hung. Sometimes bodies were tarred and left out just to show others what happened if you decided to be a pirate. Even one of the most fearsome and famous pirates of all time, Blackbeard, was unable to cheat death. He was eventually decapitated for his pirating ways. Our next clue was actually a pretty painful item. The Cat or Nine Tails used to punish anybody that got on the wrong side of the captain or was caught by the soldiers. And right under that, we had a pistol with a single shot given to pirates and sailors who were marooned on a deserted island. Pretty soon, that one bullet started looking like a very inviting way out of trouble. But this, this is what it was all about. This is what made the risk of piracy worth it. What could be better than treasure? This next clue was some mule horseshoes from mules that were used to transport the very heavy chests full of silver. Everyone knows about buried treasure, and here we ran into a couple of pirates that were digging a nice deep hole to protect their investment as long as they could remember where it was when they came back next time. Here was one such 400-year-old chest that you could actually touch and feel. And some of the amazing coins and treasure that happened to be found in pirate chests. The museum was lucky enough to have some actual recovered treasure from wrecked ships right off the coast of Florida. Art pieces, coins, they even had a genuine silver bar that had come out of the wreck. And here was a bar of gold that you yourself could lift up to feel the weight of that heavy, precious metal. And of course, treasure isn't just something in Florida. There's treasures all over. These here were recovered from India, called the Taj Mahal treasure. For things that had been underwater and decaying for so long, they were in fantastic shape. It was fascinating getting to see these. And one of my all-time favorite artifacts on display was this, the world's only surviving pirate treasure chest. This was the genuine article. There was a little box in there for the particularly valuable things, and then the bigger box, along with the key 
that could hold any number of things. This display showed how the key actually went in, it wasn't where you thought it would, and all the intricate work on the outside. This was a gorgeous, gorgeous artifact. But of course, whenever you have something valuable, somebody's gonna wanna take it. And that brings us to the gun deck. And of course, sometimes you gotta be able to attack and defend yourself. With a wide arsenal of muskets and cannons, our ship was well prepared if anybody attacked us, so that we didn't end up like this guy, who also happened to be our next treasure map clue. Speaking of guns, here was a blunderbuss exactly like the one that Blackbeard himself would use. Speaking of Blackbeard, there was a very, very fun adventure to be had right around the corner from here. We're not going to ruin it for you, but don't skip it when you come see this museum. Of course, most of the imagery we get of pirates comes from movies, and they didn't forget that here at the museum. Stretching back from present day to decades and decades ago, this little hall of fame represented artifacts from countless classic movies. Errol Flynn was, of course, one of the very first famous screen pirates. It was great seeing him represented here. Few villains out there are as well known as Captain Hook, Peter Pan's nemesis. And we had an actual Hook here from the 2003 movie Peter Pan, as well as a genuine frame of the classic Disney animation. Howard Pyle was known as one of the expert pirate illustrators out there. Here was some of his amazing work, as well as the map from Pirates of the Caribbean 3. And hidden near this box that Howard would use as inspiration while he was drawing was our next clue. Ah, what else but a clock that was in the alligator that chased Captain Hook. Disney's Pirates of the Caribbean certainly brought pirates back in a renaissance of sorts. And here at the museum, they had some amazing artifacts from the movies. These were Captain Barbosa's actual guns, and in the display case, Captain Jack Sparrow's sword, and a piece of that cursed gold. A little homage to one of the original pirate stories, Treasure Island. And a well-loved classic, Hook, where an adult Peter Pan goes back and confronts Captain Hook. Here is the actual Hook from the movie, as well as a baseball outfit from that classic scene on the ship. The Goonies has quite the cult following behind it and they made sure not to skip it here. Plenty of treasure and pirate goodness straight from the movie to this museum. And much like the Goonies were in search for treasure, so were we. And this is where we find our final clue. Right here, the map and key from the Goonies. And now with our treasure map complete, it's time to claim our treasure. On our way to retrieve our booty, we walked through the gift shop where you could bring home some pirate treasures of your very own. I appreciated that the gift shop definitely kept the pirate theming with the barrels, with the brown, the wood, everything looked awesome. It was like I'd stumbled upon a ship hold full of stuffed animals and magnets. <laughs> but you could also buy some authentic treasure coins. Sure, they were a little pricey, but what price can you put on history like that? Well, we've claimed our treasure. We've got a gold coin, a couple of jewels here, and I think that means it's time to hit the pub. So we're going to weigh anchor. Thanks for sailing with us.
This is David. You've been watching Abnormal Voyages. See you next time. We go behind the scenes and go hands-on with some of the biggest stars and pop culture icons ever. You don't want to miss it.